There are the quarks. The quarks are there, but they have no mass here. They have no rest mass. Then what happens, that's an unstable false vacuum. It undergoes what's called a phase transition. That's the inflation. That's where all that energy is released, which gives rise a few, very short time later, to the hot Big Bang theory. Okay. And what happens is that... A, so that, you're talking pre-Big Bang here. I'm talking pre-Big Bang. The moment of inflation, we call, let's call that the alpha point, the alpha point of creation, right? I am the alpha, in the, the, alpha and the omega. The alpha and the omega. So this is the alpha point. So there's this triggering, there's this uh, release of energy, and it forms the, the, uh, the, the vacuum, the physical vacuum we live in today, which uh, there's also another book by Frank Wilczek, a Nobel Prize physicist, uh, who uh, uh, invented what's called quantum chromodynamics, and he calls the vacuum we're in today, he calls that the multi-layered, multi-colored vacuum superconductor. And of course, see, my PhD thesis was in superfluid, superconductors, all that, so it all kind of fits together. And, uh, and uh, uh, you know, it's like Jacob's code of many colors at this. So what happens is, in the moment of the creation, the moment of the creation, and the creation may be coming from the future, but be a hologram effect, that's another story, but I just throw that in a little glimpse of that. But at the moment of creation, a lot of this randomness this violently fluctuating quantum zero-point vibrations of all these uh, false vacuum uh, massless quark, electron, and photon fields, they cohere. There's a certain coherence, but it's a partial coherence. And that, that smooth cohering is like for oil on the waters, you know? Uh, uh, from, you know, order out of chaos, uh, if you want to look at the Bible. That, that part, that fabric, okay, that forms Einstein's curve space-time in the gravitational field. And I'm able to you know, express this mathematically. And what happens there is that there's a very beautiful mathematical connection between Wilczek's multicolored, multi-layered vacuum superconductor giving the strong nuclear force and Einstein's emergent gravity field. I'm able to kind of pin that down in a very kind of beautiful picture. Uh, and uh, what happens is that, okay, for example, superfluid helium, there's what's called a coherent, uh, irrotational, uh, frictionless flow of the superfluid liquid. And what happens there is there's something called, there's a coherent phase. The ground state of, of superfluid helium has what's called a coherent phase, almost like a hologram also. And, uh, but what happens in the case, so what happens though in the case of the emergence of gravity at the alpha point of the creation of our universe is that there are eight of these coherent phases. There are eight of these coherent phases, and they give rise to what are called there are eight gluon nuclear force fields in the multicolored sup vacuum superconductor of quantum chromodynamics. And those coherent fields, you look at them in a certainly different way, they also give rise to Einstein's general relativity theory of gravity. It comes out. It's just absolutely Beautiful. Does this provide any insight whatsoever as to why the Big Bang happened? Oh, ah, well, now, why, okay, now, okay, now, that's, okay. Yes, yes, but you need some more ideas. It's not just what I said. It's that what I said plus a little more. There's some more ideas. And you need the idea that the universe is a hologram. And I mean it now with the way Lenny Susskind talks about it. Lenny Susskind and, and this guy Gerard. Please Tupor. explain that. It's very complicated. It, I it's, know. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty complicated. Uh, but you have that. I would recommend that pe that people watching this video that you look at Lenny Susskind's popular books uh, uh, because he uh, where he talks about the holographic universe and look at some of his papers. Uh, you get them on the archive, uh, and um, and uh, it has to do with dark energy. Okay. I have, let me go back to the alpha point. In the alpha point, there was a partial cohering of the random false vacuum, zero-point vacuum fluctuations of all the matter fields. A partial cohering. But not all of it cohered. The coherent part is Einstein's gravitational field, the curvature of space-time, and possibly also something called torsion that the Russians, like uh, Gennady Shipov and other people, are working on. Okay? And, um, but... What about the stuff that didn't cohere? What about that stuff? Okay, what didn't cohere, there are two kinds of random stuff that did not cohere. There are what, what are called virtual bosons, like virtual photons, and that is the dark energy, in my opinion. That's the dark, that is the, that is the repulsive anti-gravity dark energy field that the astronomers have detected uh, in the type 1a supernovae that's accelerating the rate of expansion 
of three-dimensional space of our universe. So the, you know, so that, that but the, that's the seventy-three percent of the stuff of the world from virtual bosons. They they have what's called spin one, like virtual photons. Ordinary like matter. Virtual, but no, not ordinary. This is okay. not matter. This is light. Light. Light is not ah. ordinary. Virtual light. The 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 virtual light. Fields, the randomly fluctuating virtual light fields actually put off, uh, you know, talks about a lot in his, his theory. That virtual light field actually anti gravitates. Virtual bosons. Really? Yeah. See, that's, and that you can show that that comes from Einstein's equivalence principle and what's called Lorentz invariance. And that's a standard. Is that result. why the universe is expanding? No, no. Well, the universe is expanding. Well, it's it's why the it's why the expansion is accelerating. It's okay. It's why okay. the expansion rate is not slowing down. Okay. It's, that the expansion is accelerating. The reason it's expanding that's just Einstein's theory, even without dark energy, it expands. Got it. Okay. So there's uh, these are very subtle. So that's very why it's accelerating. That's why it's speeding up rather than slowing down from the virtual bosons, the virtual light, the virtual light, the shadow light that's inside the vacuum is causing the acceleration of the universe to... Because it has this anti-gravitational... You can prove it has anti-gravity in three-dimensional space. So it's pushing space outward. No, well, yes, it, but it, the space is already going to expand. It wants to expand anyway. But this is... It used to be thought that the ordinary matter uh, in, the, uh, in the universe would slow the expansion rate down. It's called dec that, that We, everybody expected to, up to 10 years ago, there'd be a decelerating expansion. Right, we'd reach a maximum expansion point and we'd yeah, start to maybe contract. Into a big crunch or all that kind of stuff. That's what they, they kind of uh, uh, hope for. But that's not the way it turned out. What's happening is that these virtual bosons, these virtual light and maybe other spin one bosons, maybe spin zero, spin two, uh, but they are accelerating the expansion. Seventy-three so percent of the stuff is ex is accelerating the expansion of the universe. What about the twenty-three percent? What about the dark matter, which is on a smaller scale? See, because it's attractive. Those are virtual quark antiquark pairs. They're what are called fermions, uh, or, and virtual electron positron pans pairs all inside the vacuum. So the virtual Quarks and the, virtu the virtual quark antiquark pairs and the virtual electron positron or anti electron pairs, they all have the opposite effect. And that they're 23% of the stuff of the world. They cause, uh, they ca they, they cause attractive gravity. And that and that and since it's attractive, they're you know they're clumping together on smaller scales, whereas the the anti-gravity stuff is kind of spreading out as uniformly as it can on the largest possible scale, which is what we see. You see. But it, but in the cosmological sense, um, the, the the dark matter component doesn't affect the overall no. rap, r rapid no, no, or, or acceleration of no, the expansion. No, so there are different scales. We're talking the cosmological expansion is on a much bigger scale, many, many much bigger scale. But where we see the dark matter, we look at it at the center of our galaxy. In the center of our galaxy, there's not only a giant black hole in the center of our galaxy, but up around that black hole, there's a much bigger what's called galactic halo of dark matter, of dark matter. And it's that galactic halo that spreads out way beyond the black hole. There's this huge black hole, I forget, I don't know, 100 million, I forget how many. Uh, sun, solar masses, you know, that's at the center of our galaxy. And by the way, almost all galaxies are the same. There may be some exceptions, but this is not just, our galaxy is, is a typical galaxy here of the, of the billions and billions of galaxies. They all have the, like a big black hole in the center and this big, much bigger spherical galactic halo of dark matter, which is just vacuum. See, it's just, what's, it's just an exotic phase of quantum vacuum in which the density a virtual quark, a virtual fermion, anti-fermion pairs, mainly mostly electron-positron pairs, dominate. Their density is bigger there than the opposing density of virtual bosons, of virtual light. So the virtual, and they they clump, and that's the galactic hill, and the, and that's what's keeping our. Soul